Ben. Hey, Michael, it's great to see you again today. Hey, Ty, how are you, man? I'm doing awesome, man. So here it is, it's Friday, and I'm just coming out of a Tony Robbins seminar, and I was in lockdown for the last six days. So, you know, I wanted to catch up with you as we do on our weekly and just see kind of what were some of the hot things for news-wise? What's going on in the real estate industry this last week? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things we really want to talk about. I think the, the, the largest thing is I did, a, I did an after hours, uh, which is something you haven't seen yet because I just started in this week at six, seven o'clock at night. I, I pontificate about one or two key topics. And on Wednesday, the big one was unemployment claims, right? That's one we talk about on Thursday. And I pontificated the only way we could get a stimulus deal done is if the unemployment claims were north or over 900,000. Lo and behold, Thursday money, morning comes, they're bad, but they're not bad enough, right? They were expected to be in the sevens. They came in at 853, but it wasn't the 900. So it wasn't quite bad enough to get certain sets of people in Congress off their butt. Uh, so we are still talking about stimulus. Uh, they are supposed to pass what's called a continuing resolution today. If they don't, uh, because their budget hasn't been passed, they could, be, uh, they could be shutting down. So they have till midnight tonight Eastern to do that. We'll see. I fully expect them to do it. But uh, number one, Congress has failed the American people. Uh, the K-shaped economy is real. Uh, I did a report today just proving so. The same data, two different articles. One article talked about 40% of the Americans looking to spend less on Christmas. Same data, same stuff, flips it over and says 60% of the people are going to spend more. Folks, that's the K-shaped economy in a nutshell. Um, and again, the people that are in the bottom are hurting. They're being told yet again in many states they're not essential. Um, they're being, you know, they're... They, a million women have been asked to stay out of the workforce because they have to, you know, take care of their kids and homeschool them. And it's just bad. And it's disappointing to see Congress make it a, re, uh, you know, a red, blue, left, right issue. And then finally, the big, the big thing of the week was a, a really good get for the channel. We got somebody from John Burns Real Estate Consulting, and we talked all about 2021, right? If you've been following my channel, you've heard me say that I think single family is going to be the best investment next year. You've heard me talk about a 10% appreciation when other individuals talk about a 30 or 40% fall. So it was interesting to see where I agreed and disagreed uh, with John Burns Consulting. They got 20 years in the game. They nailed the last crisis. They're paid by just gigantic organizations and hedge funds. And, and we got about 40 minutes and one of their number one analysts and we just riffed. It was a total blast. Uh, that that uh, interview, I think it's called uh, 2021 Real Estate Investing or something. Uh, you got it. Got to watch that one. That's, that that's that's the highlight of the week i love it yeah john burns that group man they're on their game and they've been in the game like you a long time so 100 percent. i'm excited to listen to that and watch that so um let me ask you so talking about the unemployment claims what were the unemployment claims if we can compare the 853 853,000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. claims new claims this week mm -hmm. how how would that relate to let's say like some march april numbers when covid was first new and we kind of felt like the world might be melting and yeah. what, what are, how do those numbers compare well they're well so it's, it's interesting if, if your comparison is to like april or march i forget what week was bad but we had one week where we had six million claims wow. yeah we, we did uh that will go down as a record of all time i mean i it's we basically shut the economy down and, and you know, a large swath was not essential. Uh, so we, we had, I think it was four weeks in a row, we were north of a million. Uh, that said, we have been trending down until three weeks ago. We had gotten as low as 707, as I recall. Um, but what happened around uh, middle of November is we reversed that trend. And I'm one saying, hey, the, the data is so noisy you just never know. But now we've got three weeks of validation. The trend is up. And this is what, again, we've been talking about. You and I have had casual conversations that we're in for some dark, dark times. And the leading indicator, and it's reported every Thursday, it's uh, 530 Pacific, 830 Eastern, is new claims. And I'm afraid they're going to be heading over a million uh, sometime in December. And that's a tragedy. And then the last thing to talk about employment claims most people remember the Great Recession. The, the sad fact about the Great Recession is the peak 
like the worst week in the Great Recession, new unemployment claims was 666, right? So we've had like six months in a row where no week was less than 700. So it is a bad, bad time. And then the unemployment claims is such a dirty number these days because uh, here's the reality. If you're a mom and you decide that you have to leave the workforce to, to homeschool your kids, you're not counted. If, you've been, uh, if you're in uh, Nevada and you're at one of the casinos and you've been unemployed for 26 weeks and you roll to the emergency uh, program, you're not counted. If you want to work full-time but you can only find part-time work, you're not counted. Um, there are so many things that make that number a lot worse. And it's unfortunate that the media doesn't talk about it. The media wants to talk about 6.7% unemployment. That number is asinine. We're, we're far closer to 18 or 19 or maybe even 20%. Uh, but nobody wants to say it because you'll just scare everybody. Uh, but that's, that's kind of where we are. The K-shaped economy is real. The other thing to point out last week is um, owning one rental at a time is a good idea. Because in 2020, if you owned a home, even a rental or a primary, uh, we've, we've added a trillion dollars in equity this year. Uh, that breaks down to $17,000 a home, nationally speaking. Uh, there are some states like uh, Washington, which is over 40 grand. California is up 37. The smallest, as I recall, was North Dakota, which was up four grand. So everybody is winning. If you can take the time to build a down payment, you know, go find that rental, conservatively finance, do a good or great deal like I teach and talk about, um, you're on the top side of the K-shaped recovery, and that's where you want to be. Right. If anything it's taught us is if you own assets, you're doing okay. It's it's the renters that are hurt. It's the service economy that's hurt. Uh, but if you own assets, you're for the most part, you know, doing better than most, I think. Love it. Okay. Very good. Very good. So let me ask you, with the unemployment claims, and I think just again, because we have a diverse audience, some people know a lot about it economics, some people don't. Specifically, mm -hmm. How do you see the, this number, this economic number with regard to unemployment claims? How do you see it affecting the economy? Just as a general sweep, and then we'll talk yeah. about real estate, but specifically just the general economy first. Yeah, I use unemployment claims as the unemployment number. Just so you know, folks, you can actually look this up. That's, there's two numbers. There's a number that's reported, and then there's a real number you should follow that they don't really report. It's called U3 and U6. U3 is what I just talked about, right? You have to be looking for work. It's only the first 26 weeks, you know, all those things. And it's easy to be disqualified out. That's how you can have real unemployment at north of 15, but only, you know, tell the world it's 6.7. U6 is all of it. U6 is, you know, the ugly truth that, you know, econ majors like myself talk about and really look at because it's the most complete picture. But it's also the number that would freak people out. So I look at unemployment numbers for to indicate what's going on with the consumer, right? You've heard me talk endlessly on my channel about the consumer, that's what I'm following. And the consumer is somewhere between ultra greedy and ultra fearful all the time. Unemployment is one of those things that tilts people back to being afraid. So you gotta watch it, right? What happened in March and April? People got wicked afraid, right? We had 6 million people get unemployed. Suddenly the economy contracted and everybody was saving, nobody was spending. That's a perfect example. If we go from a low of 700 to over a million in December, uh, it's gonna be, people are not gonna spend on Christmas. Holiday seasons are gonna be a d disappointment and you know all of these things. So uh, the unemployment number, and again, it's weekly. So it's every Thursday, 5.30 uh, Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. You just get a little, a little pulse. It's kind of dirty. It, it has a lot of variables, but if you watch it long enough, it, it's one of those early indicators about what's going on. Got it, got it. And so let's talk about, so one of my kind of, I would say almost like hallucinations and thoughts is okay. And I think maybe a common hallucination is that with the number of unemployment that we see in this spike up, now it's beginning to spike, mm -hmm. we're probably going to see a lot of defaults next year. We're probably yeah. going to see a ton of, of uh, people that are falling behind on mortgages, even mm -hmm. with forbearances that are existing. What are your thoughts there? You know, um, in a normal recession, you would be absolutely right. But if we've learned anything about this health crisis, it's anything but normal. Yeah. A normal recession kind of hits blue collar, white collar the same, if you know what I mean. Yeah. 
Sure. What we are seeing in this particular crisis, now this could change in a heartbeat, right? If this, if this spikes and suddenly companies are whacking white collar jobs, all game, you know, all things are off. But right now, disproportionately speaking, the people that are most impacted are renters. Yeah. Owners, generally speaking, right? There's always exceptions, aren't really that impacted. Then you go back to one of my comments earlier. If you are an owner, you've enjoyed equity. So even if you have to sell, you're not one of these 2009, I got to sell, I'm underwater sellers. You're like, shoot, I got, I got 12%, 15, 18, 21% equity. I'm going to walk away with some cash, yeah. right? So you're not going to have that, that kind of motivation. So A, um, it's not, I don't think it's, it's fair. And we talk about that in the John Burns interview. Uh, apartment owners, multifamily owners, uh, com it's called commercial, they're in trouble. That's where the pain is this time. It was residential in 08, 09 because of the bad lending. It's not today. Lending's good today. Pretty solid. Um, the K-shaped economy means if you are an owner, you're probably in the top. So you're okay, mostly. Um, so no, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a huge problem. Even if we have a spike, where, where's the spike in unemployment going to come from? It's going to come from restaurants closing, servers, waiters, cooks. You know, most of those jobs aren't owning a home. Um, it's going to come from retail stores that are closing down and cashiers, generally speaking, aren't owners, generally speaking, right? So it's going to be, it's going to be multifamily. It's going to be apartments. It's going to be, you know, that's where the pain is going to be. And I have it. I mean, I own both. I own houses and apartments. My apartments are not doing great because of that. Rent collections are down. Um, uh, people ghosting me, right? Just not, not paying and then leaving in a U-Haul truck at night or a buddy's truck. It's happening now like it did in, in you know, 2009. Um, so yeah, I, I do not see this whole rumor or this whole talk about 3.2 million people in forbearance. I do. I talk about it, John Burns. We can get it down to about four to 500 people that might be in real trouble. Um, but that's nothing. I mean, 400,000 homes nationally speaking, when we do seven or 8 million a year, that, that should be gone in a minute. Plus the other thing that we talk about is if they're really going to go through foreclosure, the average foreclosure in California is 700 days. So even if somebody's in trouble, you're not going to foreclose to 2022, right? So you'll never see the inventory. It's just not going to show up, right? All these people talking about a 30 or 40% crash just don't know how math works. It's just, yeah. it's just not going to happen next year. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I just wanted to just reiterate that for the viewers and the audience that it, it stays our theme and, and, you know, again, knowing and understanding where the market's going. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about multifamily for a minute. And I, and I want to get a, even a little bit deeper because I know we've got some sophisticated people that, that do have multifamily, maybe smaller two, four, two to four unit. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to, for the viewers and even for myself, maybe explain in terms of when you're buying a 20 unit apartment building, mm -hmm. Talk about specifically the financing. Are they typically 10-year loan balloons? Mm -hmm. Are they five-year, seven-year? I know that there was some talk about how commercial lending may add to a bit of a tsunami in the commercial yep. apartment space. Can yes. talk a little bit about the lending and the relationship and how that, how that works? Yeah, so you've caught on to something that is, is, is going to be the pain. It's amazing how similar this pain we're about to talk about was similar to the residential nonsense in 09 and 10. What happened in 09 and 10? The debt was uh, adjustable rate mortgages, right? It had, two, you know, the, the, the loan that was most toxic was a 0.9% more interest only payment for two years. Then it reset to principal and interest at seven or eight or 9% for the next 28 years. That was the most toxic product created. So what, what does that mean? Well, that means you got two years of ridiculously low payments and the mortgage broker who sold you this garbage uh, made a big fee. And what the story was is, don't worry, you'll appreciate, you will refinance in two years, right? That was the story. And then once prices started falling and inventory started building, you were stuck and you could never afford the mortgage because the mortgage, it, it tripled and quadrupled sometimes on people. It was just ugly. So you had to default. It's like bad product, had to get out, done. But now you switch this to multifamily. Multifamily really has the same thing, except a couple of things. First off, multifamily, you're putting real down payments. Most commercial loans, you're putting 35% down minimum, right? There may be some cities where they're like, that's a secondary or tertiary city. We want you to put 40% down. 
So you have real, real down payments, right? No, no zero down, no 5% loans. It's real money going down. Then the next thing is you have typically in today's product, you have what's called an IO period, interest only period. And this is what's going to smack people. If you did an IO in 18 or 19, that was one, two or three years, you're about to go fully amortized, which means interest and principal at the wrong time, right? You had IO in the first couple of years because you probably bought it for value add. You had to manage payments because you're going to change the roof, change the mechanicals. You're going to raise rents. That was a whole value add play. Now, three years later, you're going to go principal and interest. You have returns you have to pay either to yourself or your investors. And now you have vacancies, you have lower rent, uh, you have poor collections, and your payment just went up 50% because now you have to add the principal to it. Um, so that's the problem is commercial loans all have periods like that. There are some 30 year fixed loan products, but that's for the biggest, the best, no, nothing you or I could get. Uh, you can get pretty good rates, uh, but we'll have three, five, seven, sometimes 10. It's the three year, five year that's going to get people smoked. Um, it's the IO going fully amortized. It's going to get people smoked. There's going to be a lot of stress. And unfortunately, what this means is banks will go into technical foreclosure and the banks will, will for the most part, be okay. Because remember, they required 40% down. So the bank is going, it's, it's going to be hard for a building to lose more than 40%, but it can happen. But the banks will be, the banks will be injured. The equity holder, the owner will be destroyed. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, that's tough. Talk about, so like, I, I want to just, as we kind of move toward the finish of this interview, um, one of the things that Tony Robbins teaches, and as I mentioned, coming out of that seminar and, and just really being clear and focused on where I want to go and what, you know, what's next and, you know, how, I, how I'm designing and living my life, um, you're somebody I look up to and somebody, Tony talks about modeling. Huh. And he talks about, you know, you find people that are doing what you want to do, people that are doing what you're doing at a higher level, and you model them, right? So the idea is to see what they're doing. So I just want you to share, and you can keep it, you know, brief and a little bit more overview. Mm -hmm. Talk about your blueprint. Like as an example, you and I are crystal clear. Single families are the best asset class to be in mm -hmm. right now. And as we go into 2021, right? Mm -hmm. For lots of reasons we don't have to cover. I think most people understand that if they've been following your channel or even following our series here. Mm -hmm. So to that, maybe talk about your blueprint and that single families right now, 2021, as we go into 22, 23, and nobody has a crystal ball, but you're paying attention at mm -hmm. a much higher level. You mm -hmm. have more stake in, in what's happening. Yeah. How do you see those single families 1031 exchanging and kind of like what you did to be where you're at now, your blueprint? How do you see that blueprint going forward? Yeah, so th thank you for that. I appreciate that. And um, I, I look forward to interviewing you about Tony Robbins in a separate interview because I'd, I'd love to see what one of those events look like. He's, uh, he's somebody I've admired. I've read his books, uh, but never done an event. So I need to, I need to learn from you. Uh, but my blueprint is I need to track the consumer. I need to track what's going on with the consumer. It all starts with the consumer. We're a consumer-based economy. The consumer is you know, an owner or a renter, so they're my biggest customer or my biggest competitor. I need to know what they're doing. And right now, with what's going on with space is good, urban flight, um, work from home, what this is all telling me is big cities like San Francisco are in trouble. And smaller cities that easy, easy commute to the Bay Area Good, i.e. Fresno, good. So what am I going to do in that environment? I'm going to buy as many single family homes that I can. They must be conservatively financed. They must cash flow because I can be wrong, right? I had never bet on appreciation. I never do anything like that. So my ultimate holding period is forever. Um, but my intention is I'm going to repeat what's in my book. I'm going to spend the next three-ish years buying quality single family homes that cash flow. And then I'm guessing that Fresno is going to see a couple of very good years of appreciation. Uh, like we did in our book. And then I'm going to 1031 exchange into multifamily because back to our earlier conversation, I expect some multifamily buyers to go bust. Yep. I expect them to have done expense. And again, remember, I told you I was selling apartments in 2019. I promise you those buyers got interest only debt on troubled assets. So, you know, it's possible they get through it, but not all of them. And I'm going to use my equity position to, to go into multifamily in 2023, 2024. Um, 
in my ratio last time, it just works out. I went from eight to 80. So, you know, I'm going to try to 10 X my inventory. So for every house I successfully buy in the next two or three years, I'm going to try to get 10 units on the exit. So um, that's, that's the blueprint. That's the plan uh, for all the help I give every day. You know, my, my number one job is to add cash flow to our properties, right? I'm trying to add 1500 bucks a month net posit or a quarter, sorry, a quarter. Um, so, I mean, it's still important for me to do that. So yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. And, and again, I share everything all the time, as you know, but that's my blueprint. I love it. 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 Thank you for that. So last question I want to ask you. So um, a lot of news this week I did hear in, about the vaccine. I didn't really deep dive into it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a two part question. It's actually a one part question. And so obviously the vaccine seems to be a lot of focus. And so with the vaccine, as the vaccine rolls out over the next 90 days, the next 180 days, mm -hmm. let's even just say over the next 12 months, sure. whatever that timeline is, what do you see for a realistic, we get back to normal? And I know nobody knows because it's so unique and so unusual, but just if you had to guess, how would you, yeah. what do you see as kind of getting back to normal and we'll call yeah. it, you know, 80% recovered? Yeah, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you, these are the things that I see for 2021. I see a slow Q1. Um, I see Congress failing us. I see no stimulus, slow Q1. So slow Q1 means negative GDP. But from there, right, the vaccines are already rolling out. There's, there's a pretty good talk about the first Americans will be inoculated in Tuesday or Wednesday next week, right? It'll start with the most urgent and, and all of that, but it'll start, right? That's, we've been waiting for this. So my guess is um, Q2, Q3, Q4, each quarter is better. Each quarter is positive. And by the time Q4 gets here, we could see growth rate, a GDP American growth rate of five or 6%, which is very good, right? We're used to be happy with 2%. Uh, I'm actually calling the next decade, certainly the next five years, let's say the next five years, the decade's too far. I'm referring to the next five years as the roaring 20s. Uh, I did a lot of research about, you know, is it the, is a Great Depression 2.0 or roaring 20s? And I didn't know. So I did a bunch of research and I think what's coming around the corner is the next four years are going to be pretty darn good. Net positive growth, uh, cheap debt, infrastructure investment, uh, housing, new business formation. We're going to have record bankruptcies in Q4 but I bet you we have record business creation in Q2. And then again, a record in Q3, right? So there's, there is another side. Uh, I don't believe you can kill the American spirit. I believe you can certainly injure it. I think you could slow it down. I think we're doing a very good job of trying to do that today, but we're going to come out of this thing freaking swinging. Um, you know, back to normal, what is normal? Like 2019 kind of stuff. Uh, depends where you are, right? Will Vegas be at 2019? No. Will Flights be at 2019? No. But will we be going back to malls? Will we be going back to restaurants? Absolutely. I believe what we're going to see is companies that have really won, like Amazon, Peloton, uh, Zoom, uh, Clorox, right? All these companies that were kind of right time, right place. They're going to have tough compares and they're going to miss because I can promise you, I've done so much DoorDash the last nine months. I will, I'll probably do another year and never do a DoorDash because I want my food hot. I want to go patronize. I want to be in public. I'm tired of being locked up. Um, so these companies are going to, are, are going to have some really tough compares and, and stocks will get hit. But yeah, I think, um, and then the other thing, because we are a real estate channel, I think, dude, I think the biggest, and I got this validated with John Burns' team yesterday. I think your spring selling season is going to be bananas. Yeah. I think what happened in last time is the move up buyer didn't move. They went to Home Depot and bought paint instead. And dude, I think the next, I think this next April, May, June, freaking going to be nuts. Because again, you're going to get move up buyers. And the beauty of a move up buyer is you as an agent, you can potentially get two sides, right? Yeah. You can help them sell and help them buy. So if you're a real estate agent, you better get ready for a very busy year starting probably March. And, uh, you know, I am, I am wildly optimistic about Q2 through Q4. I am hugely pessimistic about the existing quarter Q4. And I, I'm afraid Q1 is going to be pretty bad as well. Yeah. No, that's so good, Michael. So good. So great, man. Thank you for sharing all your wisdom and insights and perspective. And again, if you're not following Michael, you absolutely are missing out. Um, he does incredible. So you can buy the book, One Rental at a Time. You can find that on Amazon. Very easy. Great read. 
Um, the thing I love that Michael that you do best and mm -hmm. you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook at one rental at a time. Mm -hmm. The thing I love that I think is Michael's best work is, is, is these videos. There is a ton of content on his YouTube channel at one rental at a time. His YouTube channel is full of education. It's full of uh, insight, perspective. Uh, the John Burns interview, I can't wait to listen to. Um, we're going to have uh, Barry Habib next month, who Barry is an expert um, and the mortgage interest rate, residential mortgage. So um, just really good stuff, Michael. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Ty. Take care. Dude, that was great.